Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over electrophilic aromatic substitution, specifically factors that affect EAS, which is the abbreviation EAS. For example, when benzene is connected to groups such as a methoxy group and or an NO2 group, how does this affect what happens when an electrophile is added to the benzene? Well, in summary, when an electron donating group is attached to benzene, electrophiles will add to the ortho, which means right beside me, and the para positions. If you want to count the carbons a part of the ring, starting we're counting number one is where the group of interest is, two, three, four, five, six. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. This labeling is arbitrary, but if this is group number one, the ortho positions will be two or six. So electrophile could add here. And the para position will be position number four. So this will be the para, and this will be the ortho. Whereas when benzene has an electron withdrawn group attached, such as NO2, the electrophile is directed to the meta position. Where the meta position, if you label in the same fashion, one, two, three, four, five, six, will be the three and or five positions. And assuming we're only adding in one E plus, it would add to the three or the five, where these would be equivalent structures. And this would be the meta position. So to explain why this happens, we have to look at resonance because resonance is going to explain to us where the electron density is. And in organic chemistry, the electron density tells us exactly how a reaction is going to proceed via opposites attract. So starting off, let's look at the resonance of benzene with a methoxy group. I'm going to start with the lone pair on the oxygen, a part of the methoxy, and it's going to go two in, two up, we're going to stop at each intermediate resonance form. So the oxygen has lost electrons, it will become cationic where we have lec, gen, lose electrons become cationic, gain electrons become negative. To N, this carbon has gained a lone pair because these two electrons that were initially in a CC double bond are now a lone pair on this carbon. So this carbon will be negatively charged because it gained electrons become negative. And we still have our two pi bonds that reside on the ring. So we can keep going. We can go two in, two up, where the negative charge will now reside on the para position. And nothing has changed over here, so make sure to draw that epoxy group in with the positive charge. Now there will be two double bonds still. And we can draw one more resonance structure of interest to us, two in, two up. And the reason I'm saying two in, two up is because, well, we're moving a lone pair, which is two electrons, and then we're moving um, a pi bond, which has two electrons. So the negative charge is now on that carbon, and double bonds are here and here. If I arbitrarily label these carbons, like carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And I go back to my original structure, but I consider this labeling in all of the intermediates I drew. One, two, three. Considering our original structure and the labeling we have arbitrarily defined, where did the negative charges end up? Well, they ended up on carbons number two or and number six. I can draw a fake little negative charge at two, six, and four. So carbons two, six, and four in our imaginary world are negatively charged, maybe all at the same time, okay? This is, this is just us using our imagination. So if we add in some E plus, so a positively charged thing, opposites attract, who is attracted to who? Well, carbon six is attracted to the electrophile. That's an ortho position. Carbon two is attracted. That's an ortho position. Carbon four is attracted. And so if we add in one equivalent of an E plus, what happens? Well, one equivalent in, let's say, kinetic conditions, it's going to add, let's say, to carbon number two, or it could be six. This will be the same structure. If we had thermodynamic conditions, one equivalent.
they're a hindrance because big groups or just groups in general because all atoms have electrons and electrons hate each other they want to be as spread out as possible so in thermodynamic conditions that e plus will be attracted to the negative charge that resides on carbon number four so e so we get the ortho and the para all explained via resonance hopefully this makes sense but to really nail in this concept, let's look at all the resonance forms of uh, benzene attached to an electron withdrawing group. So first, well, we got to draw out um, all the atoms bonds. So let's look at the Lewis structure of NO2. So we have N double bond O, O with a minus charge. And draw on your lone pairs. It's a good habit to get into. Oh, well, there's also a positive charge in this nitrogen. Hmm, in the last example, we had some atom attached to the benzene, and it actually had a lone pair on it okay so it could donate to the ring two in does nitrogen have any electrons to go two in no it, it doesn't it's it's literally in a deficit so it doesn't have any electrons hence it can't donate to anybody never mind start the resonance so where's our first resonance structure well it's gonna have to come from this pi bond two in two up so double bond will be between the carbon and the nitrogen now and we'll have two o minuses and now a positive charge because this carbon lost this electron that was initially in the cc pi bond because it's now in this bond between the c and the n so hence it is positively charged so now it's like help me help me help me well who can help it well the pi bonds are part of benzene because they all want to work together because of the aromatic system to n the positive charge will reside on this carbon and we can see it's always skipping a carbon the charge is always going to skip a carbon and now the double bond is there we can do one more resonance structure of interest to us two in i don't know why i just switched up my coloring there two in where the positive charge will now reside on that carbon so now let's go back to the beginning and look at our original structure again, just like we did in the last example. So where does the electron density lie? Or where are the charges? So let's label it again. Once again, this is arbitrary. One, two, three, four, five, six. Consider this labeling system for all of the structures we drew. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where are the charges? Well. Resonance told us that there's a positive charge on carbon number six, there's a positive charge on carbon number four, and there's another literal positive charge on carbon number two. So if an E plus is added, would carbons six, two, or four be attracted? In fact, they're going to not be attracted at all because opposites attract, so like charges repel, repel one another. So by consequence, who's the nucleophilic carbon? Well, it's gonna be three or five, the meta positions. So three could go, assuming one equivalent product would be substituted at the meta position. So the three or the five carbon, where the structure would be the same if it added at either or due to symmetry. Yeah, hopefully this helps. So here we can also see to just add, let's say we had a benzene ring and there was an NO2 group, but there was also a methoxy group on the benzene ring and we wanted to add in one equivalence of an electrophile where would this electrophile add well resonance told us that this electron donating group literally activated the benzene right it gave electron density to the benzene ring hence making it more nucleophilic what did the no2 do well the no2 actually took electron density away so it makes it less electrophilic so find the meta and the ortho and the para positions with respect to each group so here we have, if we label this one, two, three, four, five, six. Carbons number two, six, and four are going to be nucleophilic. Carbon six has a lot of steric hindrance, so it's probably not going to add there. So it's either going to two or four. The NO2 group, well, if we relabel one, two, three, four, five, six, this is an electron withdrawing group. So the NO2 group makes carbons three, and five delta minus but the electron donating group made carbons four six and two literally nucleophilic negatively charged and via nucleophilic ability a negative charge is much better 
than a delta minus. This is way more nucleophilic. Therefore, the E plus is going to listen to the electron donating group, and it's going to direct to one of those positions. It could add to either or. E plus would either add to carbon number two based on the labeling with respect to the electron donating group or carbon number four based on, once again, the labeling we did with respect to the electron donating group. It would not listen to the electron withdrawing group because it does not activate the benzene ring. The electrophile will direct to the most nucleophilic carbon. Due to, surprise, surprise, opposites attract. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to like, save, comment, and or subscribe. Comment down below what type of video you want me to cover next and or if this all makes sense. If you want me to clarify on any of the topics that I discussed today or do some more examples, just let me know. And have a great day.